of trying to teach English from home, when you teach English from home and you have a little dog and your little dog wants attention, it's difficult to start teaching English. This is Dave. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There you go. Dave. Dave is my dog. Say hello, Dave. Come on, come on. There's Dave. Okay, today we're doing pre two level. So, yeah, I'm gonna put Dave down. <clears throat> bye bye, Dave. Let's get started. The lifeguard at the hotel pool told the swimmers not to do something there because the pool was not deep enough. So we have four words flow, melt, dive, announce. First one's flow. It's a verb to flow. Uh, the water flows down the river. The water goes down the river. This is water going just moving. Actually. When water moves, the way it moves, if it's smooth, actually maybe they go, the water goes smoothly down the river. If we have a pipe, the water flows through the pipe. Through the pipe, that is the same as saying the water goes smoothly through the pipe. We can also say electricity flows through the wires. So water is like a thing. The water, you could touch it. Electricity, don't touch electricity. But you have the wire and it goes through the wire. Electricity goes through the wire. And there is a feeling that flow means it goes smoothly. No, not you, not you. Two windows is very hard. Next one is melt. And to melt uh, the ice. Oh, the ice melts in the summer sun. The ice. Uh, I can only think of harder words. Turns to water in the summer sun because of the heat so melting is when you have something and it turns from solid it turns from a solid to a liquid like water so ice is hard you hit it it breaks but in the summer in the sun in the heat it melts the What's so hot? Sun in, let's just do summer in Australia is so hot, it melts the road. So you know the road is made of black tar. Uh, if it gets so hot, it will actually melt. So this is not something you think about melting. It turns into liquid. It'll change the shape, it'll get bumpy. That's bad. <laughs> That's bad. All right. Next one, dive. To jump. Oh. The swimmer jumped into. No, oh, wait, wait, let's. Dove. We have to do past tense. Yeah, we'll do past tense first, then I'll do present tense. The swimmer dove into the ocean. You can already see the, the sentences match. The swimmer jumped into the water head first. 
that's important. So if I jump, so this is my feet, I'm going to do the camera, and I jump down, it's jumping into the water. If I dive, that's with my head first, usually arms like this. The diving is when you go head first. So you could say, we almost always use past tense because you always talk about it after it happened. In the action movie, the hero dove out of the airplane. In the action movie, the hero jumped out of the airplane head first. So he went pew out of the airplane. We also say for action movies, he dove out of the way. It means he jumped out of the way. Let's say a car is coming, action movie. Car is coming and he, shoo, he dives out of the way. And the last one is announce. Mm, what do we announce? <laughs> Already hard. What do we announce? I don't announce anything. The news announced. President was coming to the city. The news told everyone the president was coming to the city. The feeling, though, is announced is very, the feeling is like official. Uh, it's, it's like news. It's maybe important. These are all part of the feeling of the word. Because another way I just thought is BTS announced it would come to Japan for its next tour. So BTS... Again, told everyone, but usually this would be like they would send a message on their website. They would send a message to their fans or something. So it told is right. Everyone, they would come to Japan for their next tour. It's That's not right yet. There you go. So... <clears throat> the feeling is not just like I tell you something because that's very casual. If I announce something, maybe I it's more formal. So people announce they are getting married. Maybe I tell my friend, oh, I'm getting married. But then we have a dinner with my family. We have a dinner with lots of people. And I stand up and I say to everyone, oh, I am going to get married next week or next year or something. That is an announcement. It feels bigger than just telling. But the idea is just telling. So the lifeguard at the hotel pool told the swimmers not to something there because the pool was not deep enough. So flow, well, the water, the, 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 the people cannot flow. They, people cannot do that. Melt, the people, maybe it's summertime, but people don't melt. So dive, that happens at a swimming pool. People dive into the swimming pool. If it's not deep enough, I could hit my head on the bottom of the swimming pool. So the lifeguard is telling you it's dangerous. Do not dive at the swimming pool. If they had used, here he has told, the lifeguard at the hotel pool announced you cannot dive. That would be a good sentence. So then you could use two words in the same thing. All right, number two. Greg is going to play tennis. Oh, sorry. Greg is going to play in a tennis tournament next weekend. He has only been playing for three months. He is very mm to win. So let's look at some of the words here. Unlikely. Uh, probably is something will not happen. It is unlikely that I will become the number one YouTuber in the world. <laughs> there is a very, very small chance I will 
become the number one YouTuber in the world. So, this sentence unlikely means the chance is very small. So, it is unlikely that I will become the number one YouTuber in the world. The top YouTuber, I don't even know who it is. It's, it's, there are millions and millions and millions of YouTubers. The chance that I will get to the top is very small, even if I'm very good. This has already answered the question because he has only been playing for three months. So Greg has only been playing tennis for a short time. He is entering a tournament. That's great. But the chance of him winning is very small. So that's actually the answer. But let's keep looking at the other vocabulary. Traditional. Okay, yeah, keep doing that. Traditional. There are lots of traditional things you can try in Japan. There are lots of things you can try in Japan that's part of history. That are part of Japanese Japanese historical that might be a hard word culture Whoa. So I think my sentence maybe is too hard but there are lots of traditional things you can try in Japan there are lots of things you can try in Japan that are part of Japanese historical culture so this maybe I need to explain is history so from a long time ago and culture, uh, that's the culture of Japan, so all very Japanese things. So this would be like calligraphy. Wow, cal eh? calligraphy. Uh, I practice judo, sumo, origami, tea ceremony. That's just a few, but these are very traditional things in Japan. So they come from Japan's history. It's part of Japan's culture. That's historical culture. These are traditional. There is the opposite. I actually haven't done many opposites when I've been teaching this. Traditional. The opposite is modern. I need to use a I need to use a symbol here. I usually do this. Uh, oh, where are my keys? This is a you should do that. That's my that's my symbol for opposite in my classroom. So traditional modern. So you can find traditional buildings in the countryside. So if you go to the countryside, you can see maybe wood buildings and they have the grass on the roof. That would be a traditional building. The buildings in Tokyo are very modern. So you're not gonna find a wooden building in downtown Tokyo. You're gonna find a big, big tower, a skyscraper with very modern systems. A very modern technology. So traditional and modern, not, not opposite, but they have an opposite. It's the old way and the new way. Traditional is not a negative thing. Doing something the old way isn't always bad, but some people make it seem like uh, modern is good. That sort of feels like other old ways would be bad. I don't think that's true. I would love to have a very traditional house. Trad Japanese houses still have tatami rooms. That's a very traditional Japanese thing. Okay, similar. Similar is kind of the same. So the all the cars today look similar. All the cars today look almost the same. So when I'm looking at different cars, I like, oh, that's a Toyota, that's a Nissan, 
the shape of the car is almost the same. Oh, look, there's a Subaru. The shape of that car is all is almost the same. So it's very hard. If I see many cars, I can't see the difference because they all look the same to me. They all look very similar. Uh, I could say lots of J-pop is very similar. Lots of J-pop sounds the same. If you're a fan of J-pop, maybe you get angry because no, it's very different. Fans of cars will say the same thing. They'll be like, no, 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 the cars all look totally different. But uh, to me, if I listen to J-pop, I don't know which band I listen, I'm listen. i listening to. If I see many cars, I don't know what car I'm looking at. Okay. Honest, honest, we'll do that one. Honest. He is a very honest man. He is a very honest man. He always tells the truth and does not lie. That's it. Honest just means you tell the truth. You don't cheat. You don't lie. You're, they kind of make it sound like a good person. That's important. Yes, I think it's good. So now we have the, the sentence I already said. The first one is unlikely. Greg is going to play in a tennis tournament next weekend. He has only been playing for three months, so he's very mm to win. Unlikely. So I already explained, Greg has been playing tennis for a short time, so the chance of him winning is very low. The other players have played for a long time. They will be better players. Traditional doesn't make sense. Tennis is not a traditional game. It's not a traditional Japanese game. Similar. If he was similar to the other players, they would be at the same level. So maybe he is lower level. Honest. Well, I hope Greg is honest, but that has nothing to do with tennis. So we're going to do one more sentence, and then we're going to look at the uh, picture card. Okay. Jenny's dream is to become a famous writer. Oh, good job, Jenny. She wants to be like her favorite, mm, who has written over 10 best-selling novels. So... The answer, she wants, to, she wants to be a writer. She wants to be like her favorite writer, but a different word. So if I know the word, I could just pick already. But we're going through all the vocabulary so you can see all the vocabulary that is available on the Aiken test. So the first one is astronaut. Oh. I have always wanted to be an astronaut. I don't know if I can make a sentence that's good for jobs. Because it's really just an explanation of the job, right? If I say he is an astronaut, that doesn't mean anything. Uh, it's someone who works in space. Astro is space. I'm trying to think of a, a good... Because the sentence I'm thinking is he is an astronaut and then he is someone who works in space. Well, let's just write that first. He is an astronaut. He is someone who goes to space. So that's his job, is he goes to space. Ah, but Japan, Japan wants ooh, to, to put the first female astronaut on the moon in 2025. I don't remember the year, but it is soon. They actually want to put... Uh, they want to they want to take the first woman and put the first woman on the moon. That's very exciting. Japan, ah, Japan wants to put the first woman. So again, someone who goes to space, the first woman astronaut, the first woman who works in space on the moon in twenty twenty five. That's not a great sentence, but it's okay. It's again, we're just trying to get the idea. Accountant. Uh, this is again. Oh, we can use the word honest. Companies need honest accountants. Companies need people who take care of the money 
to be honest. So an accountant is someone they check how much money your company is spending. They check how much money you have to pay in taxes. They check, uh, are you paying everybody? Do you make enough money? They bound, They check all the money. Does What goes out, what comes in from your company. Uh, I kind of have to do that for myself. I'm not an accountant. You have to go to school to be an accountant. But it's just someone who takes care of money, who thinks about money, usually for companies. All right, now we have author. Someone who writes books. So because Jenny's dream is to become a famous writer, I think we know the answer to the question already. Um, the author, I, was, I can't make a new sentence, is, was very successful. Uh, he, she, because it's Jenny, published her first book. So now she is a professional author. She published her first book. So now she is a person who writes books professionally. That's not bad. An author is just someone who writes books. Uh, I write books for fun, I would not call myself an author. I think you have to get paid before you're an author. So you have to write a book and then publish a book. So I feel like there's two parts. Anyone who writes a book, I don't think you're really an author. I think the book has to get made and sold to people. Then you're an author. I don't know if that's really the real definition, but I think anyone can write books. That doesn't mean you're an author. Uh, it's like a hobby. So an author is someone that's kind of more professional. All right, athlete. Uh, there's a different, because you can have a professional athlete and amateur athlete. So it's just someone who does sports. My daughter, wah, daughter wants to be an athlete. Wah. My typing is very bad today. My typing is very bad every day. My daughter wants to be an athlete. My daughter wants to do sports. It is unlikely, we'll use some of our other vocabulary, that you will become a professional athlete because competition is so hard. So many people want to be professional athletes. It's unlikely the chance of you becoming a professional athlete is very low. So we can use unlikely and we can use athlete. Athlete's the easier word. It is unlikely. <sighs> unlikely whew, that you will become a professional. Whoa. Sports player because the competition is so hard. So to be a professional in any sport, you have to be at such a high level. There's so many people like basketball. There are so many people who want to become professional basketball players. There is so much competition. It makes it so much harder to become that top level player and become someone who can get paid. Okay. Uh, that's three sentences. So we have the lifeguard at the hotel pool told the swimmers not to dive there because of the pool was not deep enough. Greg is going to play in a tennis tournament next weekend. He has only been playing for three months, so he is very unlikely to win. Jenny's dream is to become a famous writer. She wants to be like her favorite author who has written over 10 best-selling novels. So that's all the vocabulary. That's 12 vocabulary words for the first three sentences uh, let's move on to picture cars. I'm going to make this one a little bigger if I can. Yeah. Shopping at stations. It's going to be, I think you can, oh, well, let's make this bigger and then I can make it smaller again. Okay. Maybe you can read that. Nowadays, 
Many large train stations in Japan have bakeries, bookstores, and other stores inside them. These stores are often small, but people can use them to do their daily shopping. As a result, people find stores at stations very convenient. Shopping at such stores will probably become more popular in the future. Okay, so train stations, many people go to the train station, lots of little shops are now in the train station, so they are becoming more popular. They're becoming more popular, so they will be more busy. Let's look at the picture. We have to look at the two pictures. The first picture has one, two, three, four, five people. He's putting his bicycle away. He's sweating. He's very hot. Maybe he's taking off his jacket. She is coming out into the sun. She has an umbrella. It's maybe a parasol. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I got it here. This umbrella, which is for rain. And then there's parasol. Did I spell that wrong? Parasol. Parasol. Ooh. Peter made a mistake. It's just for the sun. I never use a parasol, so maybe that's why I can't spell it. An umbrella is for rain, so I put it up. Sometimes a parasol, which is like a sun umbrella, isn't waterproof. So if I use it, it the water will come through. So you actually have to be very careful. You can't buy an umbrella, a parasol, and use it in the rain. Some of them you could maybe. Uh, we have this girl who's walking her dog, and this boy who's eating an ice cream. Then we have picture B. We have all the people on the train. This man is holding the top. His foot is still outside the door. So the train is so full, he can't get on the train. And then you have this woman, this older woman, and she's like, ah, there's a big X over her thinking, maybe she can't get on the train. So I'm going to look at those very quickly. It's important to think of one, two, three, four, five, all the people in the first picture, and then the main story of the second picture before we go on to the questions. So according to the passage, the first writing, why do people find stores and stations very convenient? And this gives the example answer because they can use them to do their daily shopping. I actually don't want the example answers. I want to give you an answer. <laughs> so if I don't look at it, it's better because then I, I can only read the answer. But we said that. The station is where everybody goes. Everyone goes to the station. So it is very convenient. I knew it. Convenient. I never spell the word convenient right. This is, I'm an English teacher. If I write it with a pen, it's like 50-50. When I type it, I never type it right. My typing skills, I think maybe I have to go take a class. It is sad I've been typing my whole life and I still type very poorly. It's not your problem. That's my problem. Everyone goes to the station. So it is very convenient to do your shopping there. You could say people come home from work using the train. So shopping at the station is very con. Venient, convenient. I missed the V. Venient. Ah, uh, maybe because I'm doing this in the morning, I'm not very good. All right. So according to the passage, why do people find stores at the stations very convenient? Uh, because they can do their shopping. It does say daily shopping, right? Bookstores are these small. They can do it. Yeah, but be people can use them to do their daily shopping. So you can just use that sentence. You don't have to make a new sentence to be to get the right answer. Oh, okay, I don't want to look at the answer. Now, please look at the people in picture A. They are doing different things. Tell me as much as you can about what they were doing. So picture A had five people. So we can talk about all five people. The boy in the white shirt is parking. Actually, let's write it. The boy in the white shirt is parking his bicycle. So we park cars, we can also park bicycles. The first sentence I said though was, the boy in the white shirt is putting his bicycle away. 
So that's kind of the same meaning. He's putting his bicycle on the bicycle rack. The man is taking off his jacket because he is hot. The woman is going to use a parasol, spelled it right, <laughs> because the sun is very bright today. The girl in the pink shirt is walking her dog. The boy in the green shirt is eating some ice cream. So those are all good. I don't want to get too, I don't want to make long sentences. I don't want to make difficult sentences. I want to make simple, perfect sentences that are easy for me to say quickly because I have to say five sentences. I don't want to do anything too much. So let's see what their answers they gave. A girl is walking her dog, taking her dog for a walk. Yep. The man is taking off, putting on his jacket. I gave some extra because it's hot. The boy is parking his bicycle. That's right, exactly what I said. The boy is eating ice cream. The woman is opening, closing a parasol. They say that you can use umbrella. Again, you can use an umbrella. It's fine. Now look at the woman in the hat in picture B. Please describe the situation. So we looked at this one already. The woman cannot get on the train because... There are too many people already on the train. The woman sees that there are already too many people on the train and there is not enough space for her to get on. That's a very difficult sentence for you to just make. So again, we want to make the simplest sentence. So what's the simplest way to say this? The train is full and the woman can't get, can't get on. Ah, oh, come on. That is the simplest way. What was their answer? She can't get on the train because it's very crowded. So I'm using full, not enough space, and too many people. Uh, because there are too many people. So I didn't even use the word crowded. I just said too many people. So you can use that if you want. Uh, what's question number four? Uh, so now we have to do what we think. Do you think traveling by train is better than traveling by car? So this is my feeling. So you put the card down. What do I think? I think traveling by, ooh, by train is better than traveling by car because, so that's, that's using their words to make the sentence. I think traveling by train is better than traveling by car because it is better for the environment uh, because it is cheaper than driving a car because it is faster than driving a car. All of these would be okay. I think you have to say, I think traveling by train is better than traveling by car because it's better for the environment, it's cheaper than driving a car, it's faster than driving a car. Then you can say, I think travel, traveling by, oh, Peter, traveling by car is better than traveling by train because it's it is more comfortable uh, because I can go 
to places where there is no train. So if I want to go to the mountains on holiday on my vacation, uh, no train will take me there. It will take me to a city. It will take me to a town, but it won't take me up to the mountain. If I want to go straight up the mountain, I want to take a car. Uh, uh, because I can bring more luggage. So I want to bring five or six bags. Let's say I'm going hiking. I have a backpack. I have a tent. I have many things. I can't take that on the train. I need to have more space. I have to put it in the trunk of the car. I can carry some of it. But on the train, that is almost impossible to do. There's just not enough space on the train for me to be carrying that much stuff. Many Japanese people are interested in living abroad. Why would you like to live in a foreign country? So, why would I like to live in a foreign country? Uh, it's the last question, yeah? Yeah, it was the last one we're going to do. Many Japanese people are interested in living abroad. Would you like to... So I, my microphone is right in front of the screen. That's why I'm leaning over like this to see it. So let's do this. Many Japanese people are interested in living abroad. Would you like to live in a foreign country? I would like to live in a foreign country because I think it would be exciting to experience an, oh, another culture. So if you really want to know another culture, it's the best way would be to live in another country. I wouldn't like to live in another country. They said foreign country, yeah? So I'll say foreign country. Foreign country because I, I would miss my family and Japanese food. Whenever I meet people who live in other countries who come back to Japan, they always say, oh, I miss the food. I miss this. I miss this. Food is always top of the list. I miss my favorite foods. Um, I would like to live in a foreign country because... What's some other reasons to live in a foreign country? I would like to live in a foreign country because for me, coming to Japan was just more exciting. And I do judo, so I wanted to do judo in Japan because I would like to learn a foreign language. So that's maybe why... Some people come to Japan because they want to speak Japanese. They like Japanese culture. A lot of Japanese people, maybe they don't want to live in another country forever, but they want to go to another country so that they can study English or another language. They could live in France and learn French. They could go to Germany and learn German. And that way you can really learn another language perfectly. But if you don't have the time to live in another country, you can at least study with Sounds Great English. So if you have any questions or comments, you can send an email to soundsgreatenglish at gmail.com. And if you send me a question, I might answer it in a future episode. So uh, that's all we're going to do for today. That's 40 minutes. That's a lot of English study. So try to use some of those vocabulary words in sentences and keep them in your brain and have a very good week.